Let's talk a bit about um, modes of transmitting uh, digital data. What we've looked at so far uh, has been that we've, we've talked about a temperature sensor that would have one wire, as we have shown right here, and through uh, initially just through pulses, we could communicate the temperature. If I go up here, here we were sending n pulses to uh, to communicate the temperature of the sensor, uh, and then in the last lesson we uh, developed applied the idea of, of place value to now formatting uh, the pulses that we send down the down the line from the temperature sensor to the receiver whereby uh, sequentially we will send the most significant digit and then the next most and next most until we reach the least significant digit and uh, just like we can send a three digit decimal value if I say 246 I'm just giving it to you serially one digit after the other we can do the same thing electrically down a wire but there we're, we're limited to just a, a binary to giving uh, binary values for each digit because we have limited we've lumped the values the voltages on our wire to just one of two values either a low or a high or uh, zero or a one. Um, and what we've actually been talking about up to this point has been uh, what is known as serial communication. Uh, in general, there's many different forms of it, but it's basically the idea that you send one bit after the other and it takes time before you can send the minimal amount, a complete uh, number, if you will, uh, that corresponds to the data you're trying to uh, you're trying to communicate. So what we want to do right now then is uh, just I want to uh, introduce you to another mode of digital um, data transmission and that is the idea of parallel transmission. So uh, let's recap on serial again just by reading this and then we'll talk about uh, parallel. So serial transmission is that uh, an n-bit word an 8-bit word is transferred on one wire one bit at a time uh, typically using just a pair of a single pair of wires and uh, in contrast the parallel transmission says that an n bit say 8-bit word is transferred on eight wires one wire for each bit plus a common ground wire in serial transmission, the bits are collected at the receiving end and recombined into a digital word. Just like when I say 345, you have to put the 300 and the 40 and the 5 back together in your mind to know the number I'm meaning. Similarly with serial transmission. But with parallel transmission, uh, it, it's faster because uh, all 8 bits arrive at the same time. and the, the hardware on the other end can assimilate those all together and what it results in is faster faster transmission of data but at the expense of requiring more hardware there's now eight wires or if it's a 16-bit number then it's going to take 16 digits um, typically parallel transmission is going to be limited to um, shorter distances things that are in closer proximity and anything that is going to be over some long distance will typically be serial so here are a few examples of serial data communication so uh, probably common to your experience would be uh, a universal remote control infrared light that's flashing that's serial communication um, a CD or any <clears throat> any uh, digital media that's stored in some flash memory is going to be serial data. Uh, USB is serial data. Um, S uh, or SATA hard drives, it used to be that hard drives were used parallel data uh, bus, but now they're going to, uh, to, to serial, uh, serial data, uh, serial buses. And so there are uh, fewer wires, not a big ribbon cable, but uh, and, and they're able to what they've been able to do is to increase the rate at which they can send serial data such that the hard drive still performs adequately uh, fast. Ethernet is also serial. 
parallel, there's fewer examples of parallel that would be common to or known to, to you know, everyday use because they tend to be more embedded inside of the hardware that, in such a way that the user can't see it. So it used to be that par printers, printer ports were parallel ports, and of course we don't use those anymore. Uh, any slots for like expansion cards on a computer, the PCI bus, uh, what used to be the ISA bus, those were um, those were parallel. The IDE bus, which again is going to be replaced a lot by SATA uh, buses now for for drives, that's parallel. The memory bus. So when you you've ever changed RAM in your computer, you know the SIM cards have lots and lots of pins on them, right? As you kind of uh, you, you wedge them in and then kind of bend them down and put them under a clip that kind of holds it all in tension. That's a serial um, bus uh, inter interface. And uh, typical internal peripheral interfaces, so things that go between uh, hardware that's on a, give it on a board inside a computer, those, uh, depending on the application, could either be serial or parallel. Let me close out by actually showing you what a parallel data bus would look like if we implemented our temperature sensor with a parallel um, interface. So here I've assumed that uh, the interface is going to be, uh, we're going to give it precision of, of one degree um, precision, in, in that I'm allocating uh, eight, um, eight lines which means I can represent or I can transmit an eight digit value, so two, two to the eighth, or 256 unique values. So I guess I could have uh, a resolution of a half a degree if I was only needing to represent temperatures between zero and uh, about 128, or certainly zero and 100 degrees. So you see what's different here is that I've got a ground wire that's common, but I've got then eight data wires instead of just one single data wire. And if I was going to communicate or the value of uh, 163 degrees, say, uh, then uh, what I've drawn here are the states of each of those lines. So for the zero, zero, D0 would be like data zero, it's the least significant bit. D7 is the most significant bit. Um, at some given point in time, say right here, okay, the value if you read the value of all eight lines, at that moment you've got the value of the temperature. So going from least significant to most significant, it's high, high, low, 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 high, low, high. And when you write that out, it turns out to be 163 uh, decimal. Now if we were going to implement that over here in a serial mode way, we would have only one wire, a lot simpler. But now I need to send out eight pulses to do that, and there I show the uh, the sequence of eight pulses in order to transmit 163 uh, base 10. So here you have a quick introduction to the difference between serial and parallel data. Um, the trade-off is speed, um, but with the cost of more hardware versus um, a simple hardware and a sacrifice in speed. And depending on the application. Uh, using serial communication may still allow you plenty of speed for what you're needing to accomplish, and that is becoming true more and more uh, as time goes on. There was a time when uh, imagining that we could have 10 gigabit Ethernet was, was mind-boggling, and yet here we are, we've got 10 gigabit Ethernet, so that's a serial bus. So uh, serial is finding its way into more and more applications because we can achieve the speed and it offers a simple, a simpler uh, physical interface between the, the communicating um, members of the, of the system.